This Filmmaker IQ lesson is proudly sponsored by Rode Microphones, premium microphones and audio accessories for studio, live, and location recording. Hi, welcome to FilmmakerIQ.com. I'm John Hess, and today we'll look at Automated Dialogue Replacement, or ADR, and demonstrate how you can record clean dialogue replacement with just a few simple tools. ADR, or Automated Dialogue Replacement, is the process of re-recording dialogue in a studio to replace the dialogue audio that was recorded on set. Now, this can be done for a number of different reasons. First, there may have been a technical problem with the location audio. Say, a plane flew overhead during the best take, or there was too much bleed through from another actor's mic, or maybe an actor just wasn't on axis with the mic during the take. Now, in some cases, ADR is used to replace an actor's vocal performance. This is especially done in musicals with Marnie Nixon supplying her singing voice to dub over Marilyn Monroe, Deborah Kerr, Audrey Hepburn, and Natalie Wood. You may also have to ADR a scene to replace words to make a more television or airline friendly cut of the film. I have had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday play. Or sometimes ADR is used for creative purposes. Marlon Brando is said to have purposely mumbled his way through his lines in order to force producers to ADR his scenes. During the ADR session, he could finally craft his performance based on seeing the context in the rough cut of the film. But in the world of low budget and independent filmmaking, ADR is always seen as some sort of boogeyman, something to be avoided at all costs. But it shouldn't necessarily be. In fact, post-production sound, if done with purpose, can actually be a crucial tool for the low budget filmmaker. At the beginning of the sound era and the start of the 1930s, there was no technology for recording sound separately from the visual film. No way of dubbing in audio or sound effects or even music. Now when the studios were converting in mass to sound, they brought in hundreds of radio broadcast and telephone engineers, many of who never shot a film in their life. As sound was the big new thing, these new engineers called the shots, dictating camera placement and angles, almost completely wiping away the stylistic advances gained in silent film in the late 1920s. Now selling sound films to foreign markets before the dubbing was especially hard. A Paramount bought up a studio in Jeanneville, just outside of Paris, France, for the specific purpose of taking the same script and then remaking it up to 13 times in different languages. Called Babel on the Seine, they would keep the same sets, props, and costumes and just rotate the actors for each different language version of the script. Now this didn't work out so well, and Paramount all but gave up the idea of multi-language production by 1932. But the technology of dubbing, called post-synchronization or post-sync, was just around the corner. By 1935, the position of supervising dubbing engineer was about the same rank as a, the film editor. By the late 30s, most of the audio in studio films was actually done in post. This freed up the director from the confines of production audio, allowing the intricate art form that we enjoy today. Even now, it's not unheard of for major motion pictures to have most of the dialogue recorded in post. Now, when dialogue replacement was first being done, each line had to be re-recorded using a loop of film that would play over and over again, often called looping. Modern technologies use computers to loop the section of film that we're working with, which is how we get the automated part of automated dialogue replacement. Talk to most independent filmmakers and they will generally agree that ADR is evil. And yes, perhaps if you're on a tight budget, having one more unexpected expense, especially if it's because of sloppy location sound work, is a bad thing. But the fact is, as directors in the 1930s found out, ADR and post-synchronized sound can be kind of liberating. To demonstrate a DIY way of doing ADR, I shot this parody of the closing scene from Casablanca. Now I used a liberal amount of fog for this shot and you can clearly hear that fog machine whirling away in the location audio track. You're getting on that plane. No Richard. If I... that plane leaves the ground without you on it, you're gonna regret it. So that track, that has to go. 
Now, unless you have a lot of experience working with audio or you're really good, you have really good clean location sound to begin with, I recommend replacing the dialogue for the entire scene, not just for one line here or there. If you're going to do partial ADR, you need to try to get the same kind of microphone, the same kind of mic placement, and then try to replicate the reverberant space you originally recorded and either do that physically or do that in your digital audio workstation. Now, if you ADR the entire scene, well, you don't have to worry about stuff like that. It's not so important. Besides, audiences tend to be pretty quick on picking up when a line has been dubbed over, as many of my own YouTube comments have spotted when I had to replace a word or two from previous lessons. Now, with this scene, we're going to replace everything. Now, with ADR, there are two common practices, and sessions often use both of them depending on the kind of line that's being dubbed. Visual ADR is when you have an actor listen to the line of dialogue and then the actor is asked to match the dialogue while watching the performance on screen with no sound. Audio ADR is when the actor listens to the line of dialogue and then recites the dialogue along with the audio recording again and again and again in a loop. Audio ADR may give you a more exact result as repetition forces the actor to divorce the meaning from the sound of the words. The line becomes simply a series of noises. The speech to song illusion kicks in and now it's a matter of repeating the song. But if you want to go for a different performance, you may just want to have the actor do a visual ADR. Now, let me show you how I do some pretty sophisticated ADR with some pretty basic tools. The first thing I did was cut up my edit into small chunks of dialogue to work with. The length of the dialogue varies depending on how I feel. And also I want to keep my segments relatively short so that they're about the length of a musical lyric or a phrase. Now, I'll add three seconds to the front of the segment and include visual and audio beeps. Hey Richard, what about us? Then I'll take this chunk and duplicate it 10 or 20 times and render it out as a small video file, which I'll load up onto my iPad. And it simulates visual ADR, but sometimes actors work better with audio ADR. In that case, I'll just loop the line with no us? beeps hey, and the speech to song us? effect kicks hey, Richard, in quicker. What about us? Hey, Richard, what about us? Hey, Richard, what about us? Hey, Richard, what about us? Now, all I have to do is have my actor watch the loop with the iPad with headphones on and then record the performance into my digital audio recorder. Now, we want to do this somewhere that's relatively quiet in a room that doesn't have a lot of reverb. Uh, the actor should be in the same posture that the line was delivered in. An example is on the Magnificent Ambersons, James G. Stewart, head of post-production sound, had to loop a scene where six actors were sitting in a car. After getting sound that was really clean and good, it just didn't sit right, so he had the actors come back and sat them on sawhorses as he bumped them around to simulate the movement of the car. The resulting audio got the seal of approval from director Orson Welles. As far as mics are concerned, I'm using the Rode NT1 condenser microphone because it's just one of the cleanest sounding mics I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Now with this mic, you don't want to get too close or the proximity effect will kick in and make everything sound really deep and beefy. About 10 inches away gives really natural sound. Now once each chunk is recorded, it's back into the editing suite to place in the pieces of audio. Now, there are ADR assisting programs available that can stretch and squish your audio so they fit over the original, but you can also do it manually. After doing a rough align in Premiere Pro, I found it much easier to work inside Adobe Audition to get the final mix. Now, it's really easy to get confused trying to watch the footage and listen for a match, so what I discovered is you get a quicker, cleaner match by visually lining up the waveforms to the camera's scratch audio. And yes, you are going to have to get in there syllable by syllable and shift things around. You can try Audition's built-in automatic speech alignment. Sometimes it works perfectly, sometimes it's just not quite right. Getting a good sync is time consuming and it's worth it as small inconsistencies can destroy the illusion. Now I ended up doing two ADR sessions because I just wasn't quite happy with my directing performance in the first session, but hey, practice makes perfect. I applied some EQ, taking down some of the low range to compensate for proximity effect. Added a delay filter of 15 milliseconds to dirty up the sound with a little bit of combing and dropped in a very subtle distant reverb. Then it's a matter of adding some store-bought tarmac ambience and the sound effect of a plane passing overhead. 
I had my friend drop by and improvise some piano music, and we turned rather noisy slow location sound like this. You're getting on that plane. No, Richard. Get that plane. Into this. You're getting on that plane. No, Richard. If that plane leaves the ground without you on it, you're gonna regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon, and for the rest of your life. But Richard, what about us? We'll always have Paris. And I'm not good at being noble, but it's easy to see that the problems with three little people doesn't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Where I'm going, there's no part for you. And even though this is goodbye, you'll always be with me. Here's looking at you, kid. I just sent you a friend request on Facebook. What the? So we can keep in touch. I'll update my status when I land, and then I'll check in at Starbucks on the way so you'll know what I'm up to. Well, Mecca, install Messenger. Oh, well, that's okay. I'll just use Snapchat. What the hell's Snapchat? Oh. Oh. See you online. You know, I think this is going to be a beautiful friendship. Recording natural audio on set is still regarded as the best way to capture the sound of a performance, but we should not think of ADR as a technique only for fixing what should have been fixed on set. ADR is a way to augment the production, to keep things moving on schedule. For example, you may have a scene that doesn't allow for good mic placement because of the camera angle or because of a special effect or a scene that can only be done once and a reshoot would be really impractical for money or time reasons. Those are good cases for ADR. Or whatever it is, practice ADR because you will eventually find yourself using it on the way to making something great. I'm John Hess, I'll see you at filmmakeriq.com.